I remember as a kid being an altar server and knowing that Lent was coming to an end, I would get really nervous and I would be worried and I'd kind of have a lot of trepidation because I knew the big events were coming, of course, and a lot of pressure, ringing of bells, lots of smoke, lots of uh, 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 clackers, which you'll hear in a second, uh, for the consecration, the wooden mallet that makes that banging sound at the consecration. I realized that we have lots of fires and lots of big things happening in Jesus's life. And so I would kind of walk trepidatiously. Even though I knew what I was supposed to do, I was nervous. Of course, nothing's changed. I'm novice master now, so I walk trepidatiously now as well. And also as uh, the celebrant of Holy Thursday, trepidatiously, I take off my chasuble in a few minutes and wash the feet of my confreres who I was in formation under. I was, uh, of course, you know, uh, uh, united to them in the priesthood that we celebrate today. But it's a trepidatious time. It could be a fearful time for some, obviously, novices and postulants who this is their first time around. But you know who's not fearful and who's not walking with trepidation? It's Jesus. Jesus, we hear in our Holy Gospels, he says that he set his face like flint towards Jerusalem. At the conclusion of the Gospels, Jesus was dead set on going to Jerusalem, going to his passion, death, and resurrection. He walked confidently. And we celebrate a beautiful, beautiful Mass today, the celebration of the Lord's Supper, this new Passover. And St. Luke records that Jesus says to his apostles, his hand-picked disciples, he says to them, I have greatly desired to eat this Passover with you meaning that the heart of God was moved to celebrate this Passover with his chosen friends, including Judas, who today in our gospel, we hear John records that Satan had already entered into Judas. But that didn't change Jesus' desire. He greatly desired to celebrate this Passover. And even in the Holy Gospel tonight, we hear this beautiful line that Jesus loved his own in the world and he loved them to the end. The Last Supper presents this opportunity for Jesus to love us to the end. But for us, we question that. We say, to the end, what does that mean? Is that like death do us part type of thing? Like I'll love you until you pass away. In Jesus's case, that's not what he means. God loves us to the end. And the Last Supper teaches us that for Jesus, to the end means beyond death, right? His death is one thing. They crucified him. But it's his resurrection that shows his love as well. So it's beyond death. It's greater than death. That he tramples down death by death. By dying, he has trampled death. So the loving till the end goes beyond death. Not just death do us part, but to heaven. So that's the goal, of course, of what John is trying to convey to us. St. John is trying to convey to us is that God reveals to us on Good Friday how much he loves the world, right? How in that love, he had come to the extreme limit of giving his life to the point of God giving his only begotten son. And on that day, Christ showed us that greater love than this no man has, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So the love of the father is revealed in the giving of his son through death. But the love doesn't stop at death. It goes further. That gift of Jesus Christ is meant to be forever. And that's why St. Paul tells us tonight, he reminds us in Corinthians, he says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. See, we are still in a waiting period, waiting for Jesus to come back around. But the problem is, is that a lot of Catholics anticipate that day with fear, with trembling, with preparation 
with all kinds of trepidation, worry, anxiousness. But Jesus tells us so many times, he tells his apostles specifically, have no fear, I am with you. Even to the point of perishing on the sea, he tells them, be not afraid. Why did you not have faith? It is I walking on the water. Incredible things God does when we have faith, when we don't let the fear that the devil whispers in our ear conquer the confidence God has placed in our heart. That's what this night is all about. And that's why we continue to celebrate the Mass. The institution of the Eucharist is tonight. The institution of the priesthood is tonight. The beautiful gift that God wants to give to us that goes beyond his death, that lasts forever until we get to heaven and see him face to face. We get to have him through his body, blood, soul, and divinity. And in this year of the Eucharist, what a beautiful celebration the Lord's Supper is for each one of us. A reminder that God has not forgotten us, that his love goes further than death, that there's nothing to be afraid of, that he is with us. I will be with you until the end of time, end of the age, some translations say. Those are Jesus' last words to us as he's ascending into heaven. But this new Passover, this Holy sacrifice of the Mass is a gift. And Jesus knows, he knows that as they prepared that Passover in the upper room, they didn't have a lamb. Can you imagine? The apostles who have been through this multiple times, the Passover meal, the Seder meal, they've made all the preparations, but they don't have a lamb. The most important part, right? You have to sacrifice the unblemished lamb, put the lamb's blood on the doorposts, reminded of their forefathers. They didn't have a lamb. Where's the lamb? Jesus, of course, knows this. He is the Passover lamb. Spoiler alert. He is the Passover lamb. And so Jesus gives them this new Passover as a gift. The Last Supper, the celebration of the Lord's passion starts tonight. Because he is that Passover. And even those apostles, they did not earn to be there at that first Eucharist. None of them earned it because of what they did or what they said. Jesus handpicked them. He invited them. He called them from all men to be his chosen ones. To institute the priesthood. And that message was not just meant for them, but for the whole world. All of us, everywhere, around the world, at this hour, we are celebrating the Mass. The next hour, another Mass is being celebrated. Another hour, Mass is being celebrated. Every single day, 24 hours a day, a Mass is being celebrated by some priest out there in the world. Why? Because Jesus did this to save the world, so he tells us, do this in memory of me. What a magnificent tenet of our faith that the holy sacrifice of the Mass, this new Passover, we are all drawn here to the Mass by his, bur his burning desire for you to be united to him. I have eagerly desired to have this supper with you, to eat this Passover with you. Those words ring true coming from God himself to each one of us throughout the generations, throughout time. So the gift given to the apostles is entrusted to be carried to everyone. So each one of us needs to be reminded because sometimes we take it for granted. We may not even be aware that every time we go to Mass, the first reason is that we were drawn there by the desire of God to commune with us for us to be united to him. Every single mass that we offer as fathers of mercy, as priests, the first movement is that God desires us to be united to him. And even more so for us, he calls us to be fathers of mercy, to take the image of the merciful father in that apse, in that parable of Jesus, be filled up with Jesus and then take him to others. That was at the heart of Father Rosan. 
that God is moved with mercy for us. That comes from his desire to communicate himself to us, to give us himself completely, no limits, no filters. So indeed, every reception of communion, his body, blood, soul, and divinity was already desired by him at that Last Supper. Imagine that. At the Last Supper, he was thinking about you here in the Chapel of Divine Mercy tonight. And he told them, the 12 apostles, including Judas, do this in memory of me. Of course, Satan had entered Judas, of course. He betrays Jesus. You know the end of the story. But he even entrusted it to imperfect priests. That's the beautiful uh, uh, theology of the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, is that this works by the fact that it works. By a validly ordained priest celebrating Mass, saying those words of consecration, Jesus comes down. No matter the state of the priest, you get to receive Jesus. What a marvelous, marvelous just teaching and, and reality of the church. Every Mass, no matter if it's a folk Mass, a polka Mass, a Latin Mass, no. When those words are, sell, are said, Jesus is here. His presence, body, blood, soul, and divinity, right here, right now, for you, from the Last Supper to now. That is the church's teaching. What a beautiful gift. So we may not be aware of that, but the Eucharist becomes that fruit, that fruit that is everlasting. And so we do this in memory of him. We do this every time we celebrate Mass. And that's why Pope Benedict Emeritus, God rest his soul, he said in his first encyclical, that being a Christian is not a result of an ethical choice or a lofty idea, but an encounter with an event, a person, which gives life a new horizon and a decisive direction. The fact that you encounter Jesus Christ gives your life a new direction, a decisive direction. And Pope Francis echoed this. He said that Christian faith is either an encounter with Jesus alive or it does not exist. If we do not encounter Jesus Christ truly alive, our Christian faith means nothing. Jesus is truly, truly present in the body, blood, soul, and divinity that we receive today. But remember, every gift must have someone disposed to receive it. That's why Judas is such a tragedy. He wasn't disposed. Satan had entered him. He had rejected Jesus before the Last Supper, yet he was called to that upper room to hear those blessed words. Those, that glorious gift was even entrusted to him in his weakness and in his sinfulness. The immensity of the gift comes to the smallness of the one who receives it. So for our part, our response, especially as priests, is probably the most demanding. We have to surrender to that love, to that reality. Surrender that this Mass isn't about Father Andy. This Mass is about Jesus Christ. If I do not surrender to his love, the desire that he has for me to celebrate Mass and to come to intimacy in, per, in persona Christi, come to him and forget self, not just to put on a show or some sort of performance. This is about Jesus. And so surrendering to his love is our response. How do we do that? How do I not make this about Father Andy? Well, he gave us an example. You're about to see it reenacted by Father Andy in just a second. Jesus gives us an example that humility is necessary. If you want a disposition to receive all the graces and blessings of every communion in your lifetime, work on humility. Humility is necessary. 
And he gave us that example in our gospel today. Jesus says, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. Every day in this little community, each one of us walks away or avoids chances to wash each other's feet. And we're just 30 guys. Can you imagine the Nashville Dominicans? Jesus gives us an example. He says, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow so that as I have done for you, you should also do. So Christ himself felt the need to humble himself at the feet of his disciples. A humbling which tells us so much about him and his love for us. By humility and dying to self, he has left us that example especially as priests, especially as religious, I have said yes to living a radical poverty, chastity, and obedience, imitating Jesus Christ in this way of life, humbling myself, humbling ourselves to give everything to Jesus, to no longer make this about me. And St. Paul rings in my ears because we just read it yesterday in our table reading in the refectory that we do every single day. Just so happens in God's providence, yesterday we're reading Corinthians chapter 9, and he says, St. Paul struck Father Andy's heart and said, for if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. I have become all things to all men. I do it all for the sake of the gospel that I may share its blessings. But I discipline my body and subdue it, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Ouch. Ouch. St. Paul hurts. So from the Last Supper onward, Jesus has shared himself. He has humbled himself to becoming obedient even unto death, death on a cross. But today, today we celebrate this Eucharistic communion. John Paul II, St. John Paul II reminds us and asks us the question, would Jesus not continually lower himself to the level of so many human hearts? After that last, last supper, would he not always serve them in this way? The way of Jesus, the way of service, the way of humble obedience to God. The Last Supper, literally, in John Paul II, in his, uh, uh, um, sorry, homily for his first homily as Pope in 1979 on Holy Thursday, he said, the Last Supper in itself gives Jesus the right to say to us all, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Wow. So at every Mass, we are all desired. We are all called. We are all sent forth with that good news because Jesus has fulfilled God's promise to us. Our Lord does not come down from heaven every day to lie in a golden ciborium. St. Therese tells us he comes to find another heaven which is infinitely dearer to him, the heaven of our souls created in his image, the living temples of the adorable Trinity. That's what happens at the, at the holy sacrifice of the Mass, is that Jesus is brought to you in a golden vessel, but his real home, the treasured home, the home that he wants most of all, is the confident confident, humble, obedient heart of one of his disciples. So his passion, death, and this communion today, it's just the beginning. Not just of his passion, his death, his resurrection. This communion says that we belong to him. We can stand tall in confidence in his love, his mercy, and he wants that love to last until the end of time.